wrong way. Ah, good. Okay, so um, just a moment to define what a circadian rhythm is. These are, um, ah, I've lost myself. These are endogenous rhythms with a cycle length of close to but not equal to 24 hours. Um, so they govern all parts of our body. Um, so not just we've heard about nervous system, but also everything um, from your heart, liver, lungs, um, the scales, cells in your skin. Everything are governed by these endogenous rhythms. Um, there's been a number of um, what I consider key discoveries um, in this area over the last um, few years, one of which is sort of illustrated in this cartoon. Um, which is understanding the molecular genetic underpinnings of how these oscillations occur. So in this case, um, I have you know, this prototypical cell, but it could be any cell in your body, okay, with, with the nucleus we've heard about before and then the cytoplasm. And, and at the beginning of, of the day, so think about this as dawn, um, there is the activation of a set of genes, shown here as the period gene and cryptochrome gene, and the mRNA is produced. Yeah, it gets translated into proteins, which are out in the cytoplasm. They accumulate over time, over hours, okay? And then near dusk, they trans they're translocated back into the nucleus where they turn off their own transcription. So that's a negative feedback loop that takes 24 hours. Um, and that's what governs these rhythms in all of us. So some of you are morning people, you have a shorter molecular clock. Others of you are night people, you'll have a longer molecular clock. But I could take a skin sample from you, grow these cells and culture, and you could see the molecular genetic underpinnings of this part of your behavior. But it, does, it doesn't just regulate when you go to bed or you know, when you wake up. But actually, again, everything in your body, heart, liver, lungs, they all have to be coordinated in time. And this system is occurring in this, all the cells in your body to do that synchronization. Yeah. So just a couple other points um, about this system. Um, one of the other key things, besides understanding the molecular genetic underpinnings, which, by the way, um, the work leading to this was done originally in Drosophila and was awarded the Nobel Prize last year for, for discovery in medicine. Okay? But the other thing which has been, um, I think, a major discovery from this area of research is that we have a separate sensory system in our retinas that detect the light into this clock. Because what good is a timing system if it can't be synchronized to local time, right? So just in the same way, you have to reset your wristwatch or whatever. Well, I guess we don't have wristwatch anymore. If we do have wristwatch and you reset it regularly, okay, this is the way our body has to be, the clock in your body has to be reset every day. And, and light is the cue that does that, but it's not from the rods and cones that are part of the visual system. There's a separate light detection system, which is actually really cool on a molecular level. It's very similar to what's found in a fly. Um, you know, so, so even a very, it's a very ancient system. Um, and, it, and it's very relevant to our world right now because it's, it's a little bit hard to see here, but it's the blue-green wavelength light that this is sensitive to. And most young people that mess up their sleep-wake cycle and have problems sleeping, it's usually because of inappropriate light exposure. Because there's, um, right now, um, we're all sitting in the dark for the circadian timing system. Um, it is only sensitive to blue-green wavelength lights, and there's very little in this room right now. So your brain says, okay, this is dark. <laughs> you know, your visual system tells otherwise, but for, the, for this clock, it's, it's dark right now. And yet, if you then went home and played a video game or, or maybe you read with an electronic reader, that's going to have that emits blue light right into the system, and that will cause your brain and the rest of your body to start following light, and your sleep-wake cycle will start getting inverted. Um, so th this has been a major discovery um, in, in the last decade or so. And, and finally, um, the final point I would like to make is, um, is how this system works. Okay, so I already mentioned the molecular clock is found in all the cells in our body. Okay, but the light detection system is in our retina, okay, not in the rods and cones, but in a separate cell population. There's a central clock in our brain known as the suprachiasmatic nucleus, and then it sends out signals, both hormonal and neural signals, that then communicate the molecular clocks found in all your major organ systems. Okay, so this is the way the system works. It's a distributed network of oscillations. So each of these tissues have their own oscillation, and, and the set of genes that are controlled in your heart are different than the ones in your liver or in your skin, for that matter, or whatever your favorite bit is. Okay, and so this is a system which gives a lot of flexibility. It's also sensitive then to perturbations that we do to it by working in appropriate shifts, um, 
you know, by jet travel. Um, these are all, you know, if you've experienced this, you know exactly what it means to have your circadian system disrupted. And increasingly what we're finding with, with, the norm, with aging as well as diseases of the nervous system um, is that this system is disrupted. And so we're focused then on trying to figure out new treatments to, to help with that. And that's it. Thanks.